Okay, let's play some eight minute games, some more rapid games. Just playing some anonymous ones first and then we'll go into the account. I bought it already? Cracky. Okay, let's see if we get a game here. Okay, just attacking through the center. Grab as usual and grab again. So, when it becomes unusual, that's when we have to kick in all the new stuff that we've learned, bring in the old stuff, and try and harmonize all of that stuff to select the right move. And find the proper potential for each of the moves that was the last bit of learning that I've had so far which is like building the potential for the move so you've done your calculation but then once you've selected that calculation take a look at well okay what's the actual potential for gaining further advantages is that one move actually doing four things and then you have to choose out of those which is the better one to take. So we're developing our bishop, but we're also attacking a weak square with the potential of attacking the king. We're also looking this side here to actually attack the king if need be. The queen has come out, the queen has landed on the bishop so we can f quite freely take that so they're still going very fast so we could just take and then we'd win the pawn if they take but they're not doing that just yet so we could we do have time to free up our bishop and actually bring the bishop back out because this bishop is being protected by the queen so now we can actually take so then we're going to get the 20 pointer because the king can't go and castle if they do capture So that happened very quickly and is still attacking. So we've got time now to basically attack his bishop and take his bishop off the board. So one of the bishops will be saved because we've got two pieces under attack. One of them, they're not taking anything. Okay, so we can bring this bishop back and attack their rook. So this is a bit surreal. I think they're playing give up chess now. And we'll, we'll let that bishop go, go the dark one, if he's going to take. But this is very strange chess behaviour. So he does capture eventually, so we can take this rook off the board now. So materially, really, they don't kind of stand a chance, but maybe they're an absolute beginner. And... So we could actually just take the rook off the board. Could have actually put a check here on, but try and elongate. Ah, oh, they're just not playing. Are they? <laughs> okay, let's go here, put a check on. And, <laughs> oh dear, let's castle. May as well take, put a check on the king. Come round the back. <laughs> what if he gets stalemate? <laughs> okay, let's bring the knight in. Let's put a check on the king. Put another check on. And that'll be it. Okay, so that was a bit of a strange one. But we do like playing the anonymous ones because you don't know what level you're playing at. And even if you're playing ranked beginners like this type of play, it still helps to develop your skills and awareness on the board as to what you can actually take and what you can further develop. 
So I don't take these games as like, oh, well, that was really easy. I take it as it's a moment to develop my skills playing against an unusual player doing unusual things. So we'll go in and play a next one for the anonymous and then we'll uh, look at going in on the site. So yes, the key thing is the potential, looking at the potential of the movement after your calculation. So say you've done your four move calculation in a crucial stage. This guy's moving very fast, okay. Um, let's just develop the bishop out. Let's go here. So it looks like we're in their prep, as they would say. I'm going to capture here. So it allows freedom for my bishop to move here if I choose to. Got a check on. Then he can put a pawn down here. Then we move back. He can chase us around a bit though with his pawn. So he could drop. And then if we drop here, this pawn is still far enough away, I suppose. Okay, so we'll put a check on the king. have to be mindful of the pawn push push you can always get your bishop trapped you see so then it drops there but this pawn is right up there so it'll take a while okay so they feel they've got this bishop hemmed in so now they're looking to attack on the other side I'm going to develop this bishop out so that it's on the king's side so our king doesn't feel alone and castle now because the rook was ready to put a check on so we do still have an x-ray through to their queen, so it's got a function at the minute, this tart square bishop. Happy to bring it back here. So he's taking himself off the line, but we're going to look to double his pawns. He's looking to attack here with his battery, but the knight is defending at the moment. We're looking for sights, so putting a check on his king here. And potentially just doing this first, just to block off the battery. Now he's wanting to get his rook into play, so he's sensing that we're going that way. So we could bring the knight out to come back in to pressure the bishop, but also to pressure the rook if it goes there. So I think that's what we're going to do first, put that here. Making space as we see, so the, oh, he's actually pushed the pawn. So we'll take with the knight, which gives us the excuse to get closer in towards there and could take the bishop off the board knights hunt the bishops in our mantra or we could come with the queen here then go here or we could go there first with the intention of coming here but the queen is protecting here so which one has got the better potential for us in the long run in the long run taking this bishop off the board keeping it simple I believe because the rest were felt really long so basically now we can bring the Queen here but it is by itself it is by itself but our King is home alone and our Knight is um, our Knight and Bishop are at over on the other side of the board which is very dangerous he's got his queen he's got his rook ready to rock and roll here mm, i'm going to still bring the queen here with the idea of potentially coming here if we're allowed to and maybe mobilizing this bishop need to get this bishop sorted so really and truly moving that knight would help because we could push this pawn up get the bishop onto this diagonal here which will be quite lethal that's if we're allowed to do all of that so simple knight move pawn push up this pawn up bishop here it's a few moves away yet and it's all based on what they've, he's going for an exchange so he's knocking all that on the head Keeping it simple, his rook's going to be in the centre of the board. So he's not linked up as yet. So we could just leave and just capture the queen. Keep it simple. Don't need to over-egg anything. Now we can look to bring the knight across. Still follow that plan. Tack his rook. Making inroads into the king area. 
push this pawn to give the white square bishop some space, like we said. Yep. Yep, so that was a good call. So we'll bring the bishop down. It'd be nice if we could get this because it's going to stop the knight from jumping here. But he may move it already. Okay, so let's push this now so the bishop has diagonal and is in the game. As we mentioned. So he's pushing onto this pawn. This pawn can replicate and take. So I don't, I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. So I'm actually going to attack the rook. And he's attacking our rook, but we win a bit of tempo. So we might be able to escape. So if we take here, he's proposed the take back. But, it, you know, it's one of those things where... No, you should take your time because it's an eight minute game. It's not like a blitz or bullet. We're trying to practice the art of calculating and then finding the appropriate positions. He's offered a draw, but um, I don't think it's a draw. So I'll click XX on all of them. Doesn't mean we've won. It's just that he's made a minor slip. He could continue and um, see how we got on. Because in reality, if he moves back, I take, he's still got a check. So basically, he has to deal with the check the king takes. So our rook does escape. So is he going to be one of those that sits and waits for the time to run out, which is a whole heap of five minutes? Which means I'm going to just pause the video in because it looks like that's what's going to happen. I don't think you can pause on here. Just, yeah, you have to end the recording. Mm hmm. Well, that's interesting. So if I end the recording and then if I start another one, when they come back on, then that splits it a bit. Mm -hmm. It's not going to make a movie. Has this clock stopped? It looked like his clock stopped there. So the resign button has eluded them. It's like a rage quit, isn't it? You know, the throwing the toys out of the cot surprised there's no pause on this actually twitch talk to me No, it's just the option to stop the thing. Okay. Well, how are you liking the um, end game calculation picture? I think it's a, is it an old picture? Uh, it's been on the internet for a few years, maybe, I think, I don't know. Just went searching for some pictures. I thought, oh, that looks quite good. Reminds me of myself. <laughs> the thinker. Just tried a new, new design. So, in any event, take ourselves through the rationale for each of the moves. Might as well class it as an analysis. So, we push through. 
and we we talked through the moves anyway but uh, it's nice to just cover it off again and um, the idea being we're looking at the potential of each of the moves so all this is pretty normal straightforward stuff but always i say to myself yes it might be normal but we're doing these moves for re for a reason um, if the opponent reacts in a certain way and we've seen it time and time and time again we can class it as normal it's only when the unusual kicks in that's when really we need to like up the level of our calculation and really del delve into the potential for each of the moves so they've come through and we've captured here so that's pretty straightforward and we explained that the bishop can attack the king it might not be the best move when we look at the evaluation but because it does have the idea of blocking in our bishop so basically we've blocked in our knight we've blocked in our bishop in this little huddle of um, pawns if you like so you'd probably give it to black in this instance and say well that's a little bit stronger because now you have two pieces that aren't actually in the game he's more positive because he's got all his pieces on the inside of this armory and he can start making movements towards our king area so that's the positives behind that particular position that they've got but it's them being able to take advantage of that and spotting that you have that kind of um, advantage so we developed our bishop because we didn't want our king to be home alone and he proposes a take back and at last he's resigned Ooh, okay so where are where was i i'll continue with the evaluation up to that point let's go back just have a look at the evaluation see if it's agreeing with us with their pawn structure yeah so yeah it is minus 0 0.5 so it's stare at thereabouts more positive for them in that sense but it's for them to then pick out the right moves that make and build on that strength coming down here supporting it with their pieces you know not just the pawn but supporting it with their pieces coming down so they castle and we castle so we've got two pieces at least um, on our king side so we're feeling fairly okay but we are definitely worried about these pieces here and we really want to get them into the game so they bring the queen for the battery and i'm thinking that that's a fairly strong move it's an annoying move because um yes it can touch on the king it's not a checkmate it's worse if the queen is in front but still it's still an, an annoyance but the computer saying nothing to worry about there it's actually plus two for us now so we capture the knight because we want to double the pawns up in front of the king always remember though doubling the pawns in front of the king doesn't mean you've won the game because if they use their science they could use that to their advantage and start opening up in front of our own king so it's like opening the key opening the door to a pandora's box you think it's more positive for yourself because you've doubled pawns whoop whoop but if you're using somebody who doesn't care about the doubled pawns and they use their armor armory to batter down this area because currently he's got bishop here gets his king across gets his rook involved starts working his pieces together towards this area we're in trouble so we push up the pawn that wasn't the best obviously but we're still plus 0.9 moves the king out of the way so he does have the general idea of putting the rook there and we have our plan of bringing the knight up across and across causing some trouble either to attack the bishop or to make some inroads into attacking the rook if need be getting our queen up here working some trouble towards the pawn towards the king so generally that was the idea they push down and the pawn doesn't have any defense on it it gives us 2.5 so again you still have to be careful because you don't know if you're falling into a trap you know giving up a pawn to improve their position and that now they're bringing the rook across so as you can see it does look really damaging you know the focal point on there but it's not 
precise enough to cause much damage. So we made the decision, knights hunt the bishops in our mantra, and the position would have been too much, you know, jumping here and then trying to get the queen across here. He can always just move his rook out, and then we're kind of developing for them, in a sense, and I didn't really want that. So we went for the simple approach. So the queen is by itself now, so we can now bring our queen up, looking to try and cause some trouble. And they look for the exchange. Now I want to see what the gauge bar does when we actually take the queen. Oh, it only went down one point. That's okay. That's fine, because usually they don't like the exchanges of the queens drastically. Whereas that wasn't a big drop. Okay, so now we're, we're focused on the fact that these are on the other side of the board. And we wanted to follow the plan of getting these out, getting the bishop free so that it can do some attacks and get in the game. So we developed the knight. And during that time, we can attack a higher piece with a lesser piece, which is the rook. And we move the pawn now take it out of this um, little bubble that we put ourselves in and now we can push up and start attacking and it's free reign so yes the opponent moved too quickly at that point I know it's showing plus six for white at the moment which is good for us because based on what we did about getting these bish the bishop out getting the knight out there we successfully made sure that our king wasn't home alone so the opponent could have just taken their time. It's a nice target, you know, it's thinking, yeah, the rook's jammed in, it can't move anywhere, but not looking on the back end. So that's a bit dangerous. That's one of your blind spots. But other than that, I wouldn't say they played that badly, really. Um, just maybe the pawn pushing down, not looking. So it's, it's not defended, it's not protected. Looked like they had a general good idea of what to kind of do, which was attack the king area which is the answer process, so that was okay, but really probably taking advantage of the little island that they created, they created a little island which blocked off two minor pieces of mine, which they could have potentially built upon, I think, going forward. Okay, so we'll look to go into the site and uh, play a few, although that's really quite quite long so and we've done some earlier today so I think I might just call it a day um, unless of course we play one, another anonymous one play another anonymous one um, see if we get one that pushes us a bit and um, we can practice the potential for the moves okay yeah I think that's what we'll do because I have played a lot on on the site I've played about 50 odd games yesterday um, rapid ones preparing for today and I've done what is it five or something today in the rapid session and this is just like a wrap-up session for myself in terms of I really want to look at the building of potential of the moves so I can do that with the anonymous thing because you don't know you don't know you genuinely don't know who you're playing so let's go Okay, let's push through the center here. Mm, looks like we've got a finger. Okay, to develop the knight. So we'll wait until the unusual happens, then we'll start kicking in the stuff, putting in a bit of a turbo, which is looking at that potential, calculating three, four moves, then looking at the moves and saying, well, what does that actually happen? What does that do? Okay, four knights, it's nice and simple, so that's normal. I think this is obviously coming, he's taking his time, so he's a thinker, so it's going to go for simple, basic, stalwart moves if he's doing the four knights. Oh, he's coming out with the bishop because he wants to um, castle. Let's bring our bishop through, so that's all pretty straightforward stuff again. Did think he would blast through here with the four knight situation. So maybe he's not as confident and he just wants to get to safety. I 
and just keep himself safe rather than look to cause any trouble. So he might not be an attacking player. Might be more of a counter attacker. Which is a good thing because you leave, you know, if the opponent's coming out blasting at you, then they leave gaping holes all over the cell. So, oh, he is an attacker. He's going for this ugly looking thing here with the queen coming down and all sorts. Okay, let's take. And let's just bring the king here. It can look really messy, this, and it can look really good for white as well if they do it right. It's a set play type thing. Okay. So if we take knights out of the way, it's it's all to do with the queen because the queen ends up putting the check on the king because it's on the white square. And if this knight moves, the queen comes here, doesn't it? Yeah, looking for that checkmate. So if we take, his pawn takes, or maybe his pawn doesn't take, right? Yeah, and the queen just comes shooting straight there. So let's forget the pawn move for now. We take, the queen comes down. Nothing's attacking the queen here. We bring our queen across. Attacking their queen. And then what happens from there? something tricky like that let's go with that i can't see the further continuation from the queen being hit here okay so he's actually taken with the pawn so it's going to be focusing on doing something at some stage with that if i bring the knight around to then hopefully bring it around here because i'm trying to look after my king if i can but we already know this is potentially coming here and the thing is, I can't come here now, can I? I'd have to come here because I don't have any support, the queen. So it's all a little bit tricky. Oh, he's moved out of the way. Okay, so he's not doing it just yet. He's warming it up. All right. Okay. Does that give us time to uh, move the queen to here? And where is he going with his knight, though, just to make sure. Don't want to fall into the... He doesn't want to come here. He's just moved. Uh, this is supporting this coming round. I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking that. But I'll bring the queen here because that was the trouble was the trouble zone. I don't think the queen would be coming there now. But we'll just cover off the white squares as best possible. There's me saying it is not easy. <laughs> Doing the four nights, yes, he looked like an attacking player and then he went soft and then he just came out blasting. So a total change in character. So is he still looking to come here at some point? Get some diagonal towards the white. Mm. Still want to bring the knight down here. It's just going to chase me around with his pawn, isn't it? I can see it in my wall. Boom. And then he chases me here and then I go here and attack his knight okay let's do that you can see I've got my bishop here on this side in front of my king I'm sounding very worried could develop the white square bishop could bring the queen here attacking this pawn getting it doing something it's, my rooks aren't even linked up really okay um, I'm going to do that potential for attacking here he may swing this way and start attacking on that side but it looks dishevelled if they do that what am I missing? I feel like I'm missing something I've gone into overthinking mode so I'm, that means I'm going to have a blind spot so I need to reframe from that and just bring it back in. Uh, knights hunt the bishops in our mantra. We take. Has it gone south for them now? That initial attack there, I don't think they followed it up fully. 
So we could take this pawn here and we're on the rook, which is a higher piece. Well, it's a high piece, not higher than the queen, but my king is still really home alone. Rook's on the other side of the board. I don't think there's anything that can come in here. No, I think I can get away with that. So I'm going to take the pawn. I'm looking for some stealth move here. And he's moved the king, so we can't take the rook because the queen will take. We can take the bishop. Pawn can't take, so the king's going to have to take if he's going to take it. So it brings him into the centre of the board. We do have a bishop that can check. The knight will probably come down. We go here with the check. Now there's this half open file in front of our king, which we have to concern ourselves with. Let's take anyway. If he moves his king because he don't want to get any checks, then we take the queen. Can't really see that happening. So he does take. So we can bring the bishop here like we said. Knight takes and then the queen takes. Queen's all on its own. White square bishop's not even developed yet. <sighs> I don't really like them apples. Should we not develop first? You know, maybe push this here. Because the rooks, my rooks aren't even in the game. I feel like I'm going to pay the price. Does that give him time to do something with his knight? I'm, if I push... Oh, maybe... No, I can't go that way. I'm going to push so that I'm opening the bishop. I know it's easy enough to... Oh, no, he's blocked me in. He's blocked me in. Oh, <laughs> I can go here, obviously. Right, let's just come with the check now. But at least we've opened the white square bishop. I think that was a positive. <laughs> maybe, I'm, maybe I was supposed to keep the pressure on and get this knight off the board. Ooh, interesting times. So I can't, really, can't go there. Can't go there. Can't go there. Only place it can go is here. And we do have a white square bishop. That means we're probably going to win his queen. Yes! Oh, brilliant. My eyes just opened then. Pawn can't take, so the king's going to have to move. So we get the queen off the board. Oh, my word. What an awesome attack they put in. Well, it looked meaty. And I could actually just... He's offered a draw. I'm taking the queen. I was just about to say I could take there, but the knight's there at the minute. So it looks like we're sliding over, over here and then looking to go here. Oh, maybe not. Okay, so he's going to make us work for it then. Um, rook. So a target in here. Oh, that was not right, was it? Should he not have gone with his rook here? Proposes, yeah, I thought he's proposing a take back. But I'm sorry. Them's the apples. Okay, well, that was, um, yeah, interesting rapid sessions. And once a rematch, um, I don't think so. I'm done. I have played too many um, rapid games this week. It's lucky I've even played some Bullet this week as well. So I'm all chested out. 